Welcome into the Autzen Audibles podcast. I'm Matt Prem, Eric Scopel on the show, and today we are joined by UTSA Insiders publisher JJ Perez of the 24/7 Sports uh, Network. JJ, thanks for coming on the show. You are the man of the hour because you know a lot about Will Stein. That's what the conversation is going to be about this week or this Friday, I should say, on, on the podcast is getting some information on Oregon's new offensive coordinator. Um, you've covered the team a while. You were in depth on this. Uh, I'd, I'd love to get just your perspective um, on Will Stein from just how he was viewed by those within the program like yourself in the media, your other colleagues that cover the team, just how how was he viewed? Was this a guy that everyone kind of knew? Like, hey, he's only going to be here a couple of years because he's going to be a, a, a move on to a bigger program, or is this a guy they were hoping to keep long term? Yeah, so the, I, I mean, it was kind of a shock to lose Coach Stein this last week. I, you know, whenever there's success, people are always going to come for for your coaches, and for UTSA, this is the sec straight year in the Boston Coordinator for Conference. So it's it's not unexpected, but you know, Coach Stein is he's a first year coordinator this year for the Roadrunners. He used to be the wide receivers coach. And they moved him up this last, you know, offseason because UTSA's other uh, offensive coordinator, uh, Barry Lunny Jr. went to Illinois. So uh I describe him as a kind of young up and coming coach. Uh, very smart, very heady. Um, we, we don't get to talk to the coordinators very often, but when we did, you know, he's very friendly, very sociable, um, you know, and just ki- kind of a young and up, up and comer, you know, this is his first year being a, a position co- a coordinator, excuse me. And he's been with Jeff trailer kind of along his whole career. You know, he was at Texas, I think he went to high school, and and at, after the stint the trailer had in Texas, he went to coach at a high school in Austin, and then he came to UTSA. So it is kind of somewhat a surprise, but again, not unexpected. And you know, everybody thinks he's going to be a great coach. So we'll see how it turns out for him. JJ, I'm curious. You mentioned it was maybe a surprise when he took off. Was it a surprise when he was promoted to the offensive coordinator position? I know it was a co-OC deal. And the reason I ask is because he was 32 years old when he was promoted and he was two years removed from being like a high school coach. So to be a, a like a play caller feels like a big step up for somebody with, with his coaching background at that point. Yeah. So the way UTSA does it, they actually have like multiple coordinators a, a a run game coordinator a pass game coordinator then the actual play caller so he was very as the wide receivers coach two years ago he was very involved as the passing game coordinator and from my understanding he did call plays at lake travis high school so that's one of kind of the big central texas high schools here here, here in texas and he has that experience i he was real close i mean real close with head coach jeff trailer they used to live together when they were in Austin, when, when trailer was, was coaching there. So um, yeah, a little bit of a surprise, but UTSA likes to move their guys up internally. So they don't have to change the verbiage. There's not a big, you know, shift in, you know, style of play. So um, he did well for himself that, that first year, the, the, this first year coaching. And I, I think sky's the limit for him. This season, the offense and just really in general at UTSA is really good. I mean, you look at the, the key stats and, you know, they're in the top 25 for a majority of them. Um, just what – how would you describe the last few years of the offense with Will Stein involved? I know, I know maybe it's the same system, you know, each guy getting elevated up, but just how would you describe the UTSA offense right now? So I describe it as very being able to adjust and adapt to different challenges. So this year, UTSA's offensive line was it, it was a struggle to to keep these guys healthy. And I think at one point they were rolling out the third and fourth string tackle and and, and guard. And it was one point where they had to get a defensive lineman to 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 switch to offensive line. So. They were a little pass heavy at first in this part of the season, but they kind of adapted a little bit more to the RPO offense where, 
you know, Frank Harris is a, a dual threat quarterback. They, they let him kind of decide and read defenses. Um, but I'd say, you know, the biggest thing is, is being multiple. UTSA has a trio of wide receivers that are as good as anyone in the group of five. And they, they put the ball in, in those guys' hands and just let them make plays. So um, he's going to put his players in, in the best position to succeed. But, I mean, it's really what the defense throws at you. You know, we saw some guys almost dare UTSA to run the ball. And so UTSA pounded the run at some point. They had depth issues at running back. And they, they, they found a redshirt freshman who emerged for something like 700 yards and five games of play. So he's going to do whatever he needs to do to, to, to move the ball. And, I think the biggest thing is the the, the success in the red zone. Uh, they didn't always come away with touchdowns, but they were pretty good at, you know, converting at, at a really high clip there. And, you know, that's a function of play calling, if you ask me. Yeah, JJ, I'm curious, you know, whenever there is a new p- position coach, new head coach, new offensive coordinator, there might be growing pains, you know, moments where things aren't working fantastically. Was Stein being promoted to a position where I know you said he called plays in, in high school, but to, to be a full time play caller this last year, were, were there moments of a maturation process? And I guess I asked because, again, he's, he's a really young guy doing this for the first time. Or, or was it pretty quick that it was like, man, this guy knows what he's doing? No, I, th- there, there were some growing pains a little bit, especially early on in the season. So I think Stein likes to call for the field, which is a little bit different from most OCs, most OCs will be in the box, but you you see both. And there were some kind of logistical substitution issues Hmm. early in the season. I I mean, some of that was due to different staff being in different positions and trying to cycle guys in and out. And, you know, there's a new wide receiver coach and, you know, how does that work with special teams and, and, and all this, but, you know, after I'd say a game and a half, they, they, they got it under control and, from an actual play calling flow of, you know, how well the offense ticked. I mean, it was from jump street that, that they, they got it going in game one. So um, I'm sure he's going to hit the ground running and just kind of, it's going to be how he integrates with the rest of the the staff there. And, 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 you know, the logistic, the terms and the logistics of substitution packages, but, you know, he's pretty good at all that. And I'm sure he'll, he'll hit the ground running. Under his time as offense coordinator there, they, they've they had a really special quarterback in Frank Harris. You mentioned him um, almost 4,000 yards passing this season, over 71% completion percentage. And I think the last three years he's combined for like 1,600 yards rushing and 24 touchdowns. Um, just what have you seen just from Frank Harris helping Will Stein having, you know, first time play caller having that talented of a quarterback. And then maybe did you see kind of any improvement with Frank Harris with Will Stein's, you know, tutelage? Yeah, this, this 2022 season has been historic for UTSA's offense. They, man, I think Frank Harris has something like 35 school records that he's either broke or set himself or broke himself this year and last year. I think he's number four in total offense in the nation. So it's, I mean, it's a pretty good clip that these guys are producing at. And uh, the biggest thing I would say that Stein has helped with with Harris is his passing accuracy. You mentioned that 71%. That's pretty good when when you take a look at, you know, the the rest of the the quarterbacks in the nation. And that was one area where where Harris struggled at to start his career. And he was much kind of criticized for not being an accurate passer, but... (laughs) I mean, he's he's improved that tremendously. I think he was like 64, 65 percent last year. And that was one of the things Stein told us in the preseason. They were really working on to get him above 70 percent. And they, they got that there. They he they, they maybe did a quick some more quick passes and, you know, inter- but as the season went on, you know, he was going down the field quite, quite a bit. And you look at this last game. I mean, I think Harris had five incompletions, and there was at one point they were throwing the ball down the field, and he had two incompletions. So uh, just the accuracy, I think just helping them make better decisions. Stein used to be a quarterback, so he knows, you know, what it's like to be a collegiate QB, and I think that's really helped Harris develop. Yeah, I I guess I'm curious following up on that, JJ, just the – 
and I know it's hard because the sample size is extremely small with with what Stein has coached. So it's hard to say like how much of this is relying on quality quarterback, how much of this is, you know, his own offensive skill set. But how much do you think it helped Stein in his first year to have a quarterback like Harris? Um, and then I'm just curious on how much of the offense utilizes like a, a dual threat quarterback or relies on the, the running of a, of a quarterback like Harris. Um, because there's a chance that when Stein gets to Eugene, he'll be coaching Bo Nix, who I think has maybe a similar skill set. I'm just kind of wondering how those players might fit together. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I think it's it's a large part of the success, to be honest with you. I, I mean, maybe, you know, quarterback plays so huge in college football. You have to have a good quarterback. And the, the thing with UTSA struggled with before these last two seasons where they were back-to-back -back conference champions is that they didn't have a healthy quarterback and they were having to shuffle guys in and out. So it starts right there, right? You got to have your horses, you got to have your athletes and to be able to, to have a guy that could read defenses and escape. And there was a, there was a run where they clinched the, the regular season championship where it looked like Frank Harris was dead and he made one move and he was gone for 60 yards mm -hmm. and it's the longest play of the year and in the biggest moment of, of the year so far. So uh, it certainly goes hand in hand, but you know, a lot of times it's play calling as well. And I, oftentimes, on, in the level that UTSA plays at, you, there's some head scratching play calls. But we haven't seen too much of that uh, under these these guys the last two seasons, and I think that's a big part of it. So I'd say it's probably a fifty fifty mix between the quarterback and and the coordinator. What What do you feel like? is the the offense are they like a tempo offense they do they do they go slow do they go to huddle like what what does utsa like to be known for in those regards because i've seen that we've seen the video where he he types he likes to say multiple and get their studs the ball or feed the studs i think is feed his, the studs yeah it is this is a slogan but just like what's the 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 offensive scheme here that that oregon fans can maybe expect to see yeah, I think it's a it's a mix of spread and RPO and you know that they they do a lot of tempo. They've done a lot of tempo to try and keep defenses on their heels. It just kind of depends on the flow of the game. They like everybody else, he'll script the first 10 plays or whatever it is and see where the game flow goes, but once I what we saw a lot this season was once they get the defense on the heels on their heels a little bit, they're going to push the tempo to try and you know, not let them sub, not, excuse me, not, not let them get set and just kind of go no huddle, you know, just call the plays from the sidelines. And I think that's a big part of why he likes to be on the sidelines during the games. But yeah, uh, RPO, we saw a lot of pistol action towards the end of the year when defenses started to kind of key in on, on some of the plays they like to run. And, you know, like I said before, he's going to adjust kind of on the fly. And really that's what this game is all about. Like, you know, the the chess, the in-game chess match. So he's shown to be pretty good at that, I think, this season. JJ, I don't know how much – you probably don't realize how much you just triggered Oregon's fan base by using the word pistol. Yeah. Uh, th that was – Oregon used that formation under Mark Cristobal a lot, and uh, I think a lot of fans weren't, weren't particularly big fans of it. So we'll see how that goes uh, with Stein as the OC. I'm curious on, like, what kind of wrinkles or changes or – because it, it, you know it's interesting because again we're talking about this as if he's got a large sample size, but it's just one year, and he was on staff for two years prior, as you said, pass game coordinator, wide receivers coach. Did you feel like the 2022 offense felt or looked any different than the 2020 or 2021 offense when he was on staff in a different role? And as you said, the uh, previous OC was here. Yeah, it, it was a little bit different as far as the wrinkles. I mean, they were pretty consistent with the 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 general style of play, you know, getting their three. They got three very good wide receivers, getting them the ball. Last year, they had a stud workhorse running back, and that was a big gap that wasn't there this year. And they were still able to produce the rushing game at, 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 a, at a pretty good clip. So, um yeah, that the biggest takeaway I'd say are are the wrinkles. We we saw some, you know, tight end get direct snaps. We saw wide receivers throw passes. We saw running backs throw passes. There was something in the in the bowl game we've never, or I'm sorry, in the championship game this last week that 
we've never seen before. And I guess they were saving it in. So the the point is, I I I think Stein's not afraid to go into his bag of tricks a little bit to to get things done. There was, I mean, there was a few overtime games where, you know, I think they pulled out the Philly special on a two point conversion or something. So uh, not not afraid to get in there and mix it up. JJ, what what are your um your thoughts just on his recruiting? And obviously, the the Roadrunners are not signing five star players, um, but they're finding talent that fits their system and plays at a really impressive level. I mean, you you have to have good players to to win a conference. You have to have a bunch of really good players to to do it two years in a row, like like they have. Um, just what are your thoughts just on Will's recruiting and just the ability to find talent to fit into the system? Yeah, so he's a he's a really good recruiter. I mean, he's gonna get after it, he's gonna hit the road, he's gonna he's gonna go to high schools, he's gonna get with these guys. And he could relate because he he did play at the at this level and you know he's he he knows what it takes to be successful and as the wide receivers coach a few years ago, I mean, he brought in some really good guys. Uh, this last year, UTSA landed a really good quarterback. And, you know, he he's hand in hand with, with the head coach and and the recruiting coordinator and, and that staff. And, you know, he's he's young. He's energetic. He knows how to talk to these guys. And that to me, that's the one of the bigger aspects you want out of your uh, offensive coordinator. Because I mean, re-recruiting is the lifeblood of any program, and it's like you got to buy the groceries if you want to cook the, the the meal too, right? So um, he he's shown to be pretty good at that. Again, like you guys mentioned, it, it's a small sample size. Uh, his ties in Texas are obviously, I mean, he's well known throughout the state. So we'll see how that translates to to Oregon. You know, it remains to be seen. It's it's like this is what you've done, but now show me what you could do, right? So I think that's where he's at with that. I'm asking you this question on behalf of the Oregon fan base who's already worried about when Will Stein will take a head coaching job somewhere else because Oregon's luck the last several half decade or so has been anytime a coach has a, a modicum of success, they end up somewhere else quite quickly. Um, but do you see do you see Will Stein as somebody uh, who is is wants to be a head coach, has the skill set to be a head coach? Um, do you think that's something that is attainable in the next two to three years? Like, what's kind of your perspective on him as somebody running his own program? Yeah, I, I think that's absolutely a possibility. I would say more in the the distant future than in the short term. Um, he, he was a first year coordinator last year, so this is a big step up for him. It's a big opportunity to to go to a to to Oregon and kind of prove that he could do this at the highest level. And really, that'll determine what happens in, in his future. I, I, he's considered a young and upcoming coach, and it would not shock anyone if he's like the next brainchild of a program leading, you know, uh, being a head coach and, and leading that program. So um, I'm sure that's in his future somewhere. I just don't think it's maybe two or three years out, maybe five years out. It would be my guess. I guess the last question I got for you is just back to like a scheme question, JJ and um, tight ends. That was a position at Oregon the last couple of seasons that they, they didn't get the production that they should have um, based off the talent that was there this season. They did, they got really creative with how many guys they played at once on the field. They, we, we even saw a running, a rushing touchdown by a tight end, which just is strange. Um, What's the tight end's focal point in UTA's offense? Are, are they there? Are they just the block? Are they more receiver type guys? And what's just the the, the tight end scheme? How do they fit into the scheme? Yeah, they, Stein loves to use tight ends. I, I mean, if they could throw two or three of them out there, uh, I'm sure he would. They, that was one of the areas that got hit by injury this year. And they love 12 personnel. I mean, they, they're going to, I think they, they're going to start most games with that. And, that says something because they got three really good wide receivers. So you're taking one of those guys off the field to do that. I think part of it was the issues they had with the injury situation at one of the tackle positions. And they use that to help with blocking, but they're going to get creative. It's like, it's like you said, we've seen three tight end sets and we saw I, uh, 
a, a rushing situation with the tight end here as well. So um, they're going to find them in space as well. If they have soft hands and good hands, UTSA has a few of those types of tight ends on their roster. They find them. They're not going to find them 10 times a game like they are the wide receivers are, but they're going to make big plays. And if you look at some of the biggest plays UTSA's had these last two seasons, it's involved the tight ends making massive catches and, you know, being kind of like almost a, oh, look at this guy. He's on the roster. There's a game when he touched down or something. So, uh, yeah, heavy use of the tight ends. They, they, they love it. They, they, they want to keep the defenses on their heels, you know, because it's like you, you're preparing for these three wide receivers or these awesome talent you have on the outside. And then here, here's two tight ends you, you didn't even really know about. So, again, going back to being multiple and kind of tricking defenses, I think you'll see a lot of tight end use. All right. Uh, I, I lied. I have one more question. Oh, yeah, no um, problem. <laughs> Do you anticipate any players, support staff, considering following Stein to Oregon? Like, I, I think obviously the quarterback's not going to come. Um, Bo Nix is potentially coming. He's already announced he's coming back for for UTSA. But are there the possibility that a player or maybe a support staff member follows him to, to Oregon? Yeah, I just think it's. Um... It, it, it's a real fluid situation, to be honest with you. A lot of it is going to have to do with salary and availability of positions. I, I don't know what openings are going to become available on the Oregon staff, what's open now. Um, UTSA is doing their best to try and hold on, to keep to keep the guys together and to try and run it back. They won back-to-back -back conference championships with this staff, and you know they've lost. They lost their defensive coordinator last year, too, so – it's hard at this level because of the, the the salary available on the next level. So I don't think it's going to happen, but it certainly isn't out of the realm of possibility. And that's something I'm certainly keeping my ear to the ground on. I haven't heard anything. I don't know anything as of this point. But again, that could change in, in the coming weeks. And, you know, I think after signing day, things kind of get a little crazy with staff and you know, so we'll see. We'll see what this offseason holds. But that's a big question in San Antonio is, is can they keep this staff together and run it back next season? JJ, thank you for thank you for coming on the show, giving us some great insight into Will Stein and the Roadrunner offense. Really appreciate it. And uh, hopefully we cross paths down the road again at some point. Um, we, it's been a blast having you on, man. Awesome, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot.